Good evening everyone, Late Night Mega here, and tonight we're going to do another Shadows Over Innistrad Premier Draft. Ah, uh, this is the remastered set. Oh, we already have a table. Awesome. Uh, I'm planning on doing maybe one more draft after this, just to get us 12 drafts. Although I know that there's there's a lot we haven't really explored, especially when it comes to like rares and, and such, but Oh, Epic Western is in this draft. We had a uh duel against him in the other video. Alright, so cards in this pack. We have Lone Rider. What does he do? He rides alone. Yeah, I I actually played this card in Modern once upon a time. And um, it was in this Jeskai control thing, and I had like multiple ways to flip him in that. And it was uh, a bit amusing when I played against a, a Tron deck that had an Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, out because Ugin's plus two can't kill this. And well, well when it's flipped, uh, when it's the it that rides its one, the, the Ugin's plus two only does three damage. And the minus effect doesn't work because it flips into a colorless creature. Uh, we're taking Tamio's journal, by the way, because that is a really good rare to have. Just investigate. Even if we don't end up in the blue-green investigate clue deck, though we have some tools for it here. Um, and there's the Bloodbriar. We'll watch that for coming back. Crawling Sensation. Are we going to do this again? I wouldn't mind doing this again. This is it was a fun deck. Uh, the rest of this pack is a little bit underwhelming. Like, I guess my second pick would probably be the travel preparations. Uh, hopefully, we get the Thornhide Wolves back because it is kind of a nice just body. Or ooh, a Fog Walker. I'd like that back too. But I'm gonna take this Fleeting Memories because this can be quite the combo here because when we sack three clues to the Tamio's journal uh, the fleeting memories doesn't care how we sack the clues we just have to sack them all right but what else I feel like guy reach bandit is the best card in the pack I'm gonna take that we can get fog walkers later we're still just, like, in the mode of taking the best card and seeing what ends up being open. There's a Faithbearer Paladin here. But I'm going to take, take the Bandit. The second pick, there wasn't much super interesting. Uh, I don't think there was a reason to abandon the... Oh, dear. Uvenwald Mysteries. Yeah. That'll go great in the Investigate deck. That's just a great card in general. There's also a Faith Unbroken here, which is great. Um, Selfless Cathar. Yeah, this is going to be the pick. Even if we end up, you know, Red-Green Werewolves, Uvenwald Mysteries can go in that, giving us more fuel as our creatures die. Not that we want our creatures to die in that deck, but, you know, it could happen. So here, I think I'm going to pick up a Fog Walker, or I could take the, th we can get more Thornhide Wolves later, I'm going to take a 2-drop. Because as we know, Fog Walker, it, it goes really great if we have the ongoing investigation, that's the enchantment we need. It goes really great with that card. Why is this here? This is... Pack 1, pick 6? What are people doing exactly? There's Obsessive Skinner. There's... We're just throwing this whole thing into... This is like a bomb enchantment. How did... 
Okay, we're passing to the... So Epic Western must have had this pack, too. There might have been something better in it, like for the flip card in that, but I don't think that card should have gotten all the way to me. Uh, so always watching. We have a Jace's Scrutiny. We have a Faithbearer Paladin. I could just take it in two drop and maybe try to be aggressive. Could take an Alchemist Greeting. That wouldn't be bad. Because if we now we now I've got Boros Aggro on my radar. I've got werewolves on the radar, and I've got blue-green investigate on the radar. All right, and we have cards for all of those. We have the Bar Briar Bridge. Oh, what are we doing here? Honestly. I think the stuff, I think our blue-green stuff together is the strongest. Dawn Griff I don't think is a reason to go into white. We gotta make mischief here. This is pick nine. We've got the cultist, we have Jace's scrutiny, I'm gonna take the scrutiny here. And we have no blue-green stuff, so let's take a shield mate. Because if we end up Boros aggro, which we could still... Could still reasonably do. Blood Mad Vampire, I think I can get those later. I'll take the Stone Quarry. Okay, so Ember Eye Wolf and Steadfast. I'm going to take the Steadfast Cathar. There's a nice combat trick. Green didn't seem particularly open. There's a Howl Pack Wolf, which is fine. I'm going to take the Uncaged Fury. And Faithless Looting. We're going to put that to the side. Blood Mist, if we're not aggressive enough. I do like Blood Mist. Blood Mist and Always Watching, that really makes me want to play Boros. Green wasn't particularly open. There's a lot of blue cards in this pack, but... Not a whole lot that's exciting. There's that combat trick, that's neat. Neonate which I hope to get back. I'm going to take the Blood Mist, and I think... I think we're just going to abandon green. We only have a few blue cards here. Collective Effort. Yeah, we're going to do this. Destroy a creature with power 4 or greater, put plus 1 plus 1 counter on each target... each creature target player controls, or destroy target enchantment. So we have three rares for the Boros. Wait, no, we don't have three rares. We have two rares for the Boros. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, Faith Unbroken. That can actually be really good in this. Guardian, the, the two-drop. We need more creatures. We have three creatures and eight non-creatures right now. So we just need to start prioritizing creatures, especially uh, one to three mana creatures. We also might not be playing Tamiyo's Journal in this deck. Because if we're just trying to be super aggressive, we don't really have time for that. Yeah, 1-1 one, one with haste. That is uh, exactly what we want to be doing. I'd like to make mischief as well. Good amount of black stuff in here.
Yeah, the blue-green picks don't seem to be all there. Rally wouldn't be bad. Uh, but we're going to take this Town Gossip Monger. Another nice one-drop. Oh, yeah, th this isn't a... It's not a rare, but it's a strong enchantment. We have two rares, Collective Effort and Always Watching for this. Uh, okay, yeah, Scourge Wolf. It already has First Strike. Slightly tricky to cast being double red, but we'll make that work. There's another village. Man, I want a lot of stuff out of here. Uh, we're going to take the Scourge Wolf. We also need ways to enable Delirium, so hopefully we can find Angelic Purge. Because otherwise, instant sorcery creature will have a hard time getting a land or artifact into the graveyard. Well, I suppose maybe that's what Faithless Looting can do. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. We have a couple Madness cards. We're going to take the uh, two-drop here that can help enable that. Field Creeper is almost not bad here, because we do want to enable Delirium here. Uh, but this can help us. Okay, we have three bomb enchantments for this deck. I'm not going to pass this card. Even if, even if not all our creatures are vampires, all our attacking creatures get first strike. That's insane. And we've seen how that works... Uh, we've had that played against us a few times in this series. So now, I, for red creatures, I want to prioritize vampires, especially the one-mana guy with menace, because that's going to go really great with all this stuff. We actually might not need the Uncaged Fury anymore. I want to prioritize more removal. Because now we have, you know, one, two, three really strong enchantments. Yeah, this is what I want, the Insolent Neonate. It's exactly the one drop we want. We, this could even turn into, like, some sort of hyper aggro deck. Uh, there's a Make Mischief. There's an Ember Eye Wolf. Either of those would be decent. I'll take the Make Mischief. There's a lot of one-toughness creatures in the format. I don't want them ruining my good time, especially the Dryads. The, those death-touching Dryads, yeah. Uh, okay. I guess I could take the Explosive Apparatus or... You know, have a lot that transforms. Yeah, I'll just put this to the sideboard. Another make mischief, sure. I don't know that I'm going to play a third one of those, but I do want to play some more vampires. This is a good one with all of our enchantment stuff. Because with Stencia Masquerade, it has first strike... Blood Mist, it has Double Strike. And we can take a two drop. And we can take a top end card. Alright, next pack. Here we go. Uh, incendiary Flow. Great thing just to remove stuff. Wouldn't mind the bombardment, but it's probably not going to come back. Uh, we're just really focused in on this Boros Aggro now. Not a whole lot here that would make me change my mind. I mean, there are some other good cards, but... I'm going to take the Flow. I want the Neonate. I want... I want the Creatures. Oh, I want the Avacyn's Judgment, too. But I think I'm just going to prioritize... Yeah, I need more Creatures, so I'm going to take the Chaplain here. 
There's another blood mist. Uh, I could take a drog skull shield mate, but this is gonna be a more aggressive deck. I'm gonna take the blood mad vampire because we do want to prioritize vampires for our when we're picking up red creatures. I have a lot of three drops. I might cut one of these make mischiefs. Oh, there's an angelic purge that I wanted. I'd like to pick up the Sigarda's Aid, because there is a non-zero chance I might use it for... for constructed purposes, but we're definitely going to play the Purge to help enable Delirium on the Scourge Wolf and gives us a good reason to run 17 lands. Uh, how many two mana creatures do we have? One, two, three, four... Plus, there is a good chance that can get used, but this also dies into a creature. I'm going to take creatures now. Definitely want to make sure we have enough of those. Oh, this is also non-token creatures, so all the stuff that's going to die and turn into spirits, they won't get the plus one, plus one in vigilance boost. That's important to note. Oh, we get right down. Yeah, that's a pretty easy pick up here. Uh, destroy target blocking creature, and creatures that were blocked by that creature gain trample till end of turn. So basically, you kill a creature, you're on offense, you kill a creature, and you still get to... Oh, sweet, Toppelgeist. I want one drops. Uh, you get to kill a creature, and you still get to, um... We have enough madness stuff, and we want vampires, so... I'm gonna take this over the other two drops here. And you still get to deal damage with your thing. It's also great with double strike. Um... I don't think we're playing any of this. I mean, there's the Mad Prophet... I, I don't think that's going to be played a 4 mana 2-2. Two, two. Creatures without flying can't block this turn. That could even be a win condition card. It's also the mantle would be fine. I still don't know that I'm playing either of those. Blood Mist came back. I mean, I don't know that I have room for two Blood Mists, but we'll take it. Another trick. I mean, I already have to cut several cards. And fun fact about Ride Down, it was originally printed in Cons of Tarkir. I'll just pick up random whatever. Would have liked some more of the Neonates, but you know, we've got a lot of one drops. Oh, I even get a flyer out of this deal? Okay. Okay, well, I guess we have to consider this second Blood Mist. I 
what else do we need to consider? Probably not much else. Maybe the Faithless looting. But I think we have at least some discard outlets. I don't know if we're going to run the Arsonist. Let's not run the Arsonists. Make Mischief, Guy Reach Bandit. Collective effort, always watching. Oh, we need... Okay, we like can't cut creatures out of this. But I don't think I really want to cut any of these creatures. They're all reasonable in their own right. So now we have to cut five non-creatures. I think Rush of Adrenaline is going to be a great trick here. Collective Effort, Always Watching, Purge. Those all stay, make Mischief probably stays. Well, we got to cut five though. I'm going to cut one of the Blood Mists. Part of me wants to cut a land. And part of me wants to cut the Stone Quarry because we have all these one drops, which we can't play on turn one with Stone Quarry. What else am I cutting? I guess I could cut the Make Mischief because it is a little expensive. We have a lot of three drops, so these can technically be played for two. We have two of these that we can also feed extra lands to. If we don't have, like, Madness stuff we need to discard. This is where the cuts are going to be tricky. Maybe we just don't need Angelic Purge to enable Delirium because we have these discard outlets. Faith Unbroken can just be a game ender. So can ride down. I only have a few cards. I, I think I am going to cut a land. Because I have so many cheap cards. And we're not even gonna run the tap land because we're we just want to be hyper aggressive. So what's the final cut going to be? I think it's between Faith Unbroken and Ride Down. Ride Down is cheaper to cast and we just cut a land. I think that's my tiebreaker. The other option is Collective Effort. We can't cut these enchantments. Those are what wins us the game. All right, Ride Down can be the star, because that's the gold card. Let's, uh, let's do this. So we're looking for... I could also play a Faithless Looting. 
as a way to help dig for one of our bomb enchantments. I think we've got three bomb enchantments in the deck that are going to be great at helping us end games and push damage through. Link Q is our opponent, Mythic Rank. Number 1130. This is going to be a problem, though. If one of these was a planes, I could keep it. But I can't keep this, because we just play Incendiary Flow and then wait. And that's not how you play an aggressive deck. Our opponent mulligan, too. Uh, yeah, this is how we play an aggressive deck. We're going to get rid of the Ember Eye Wolf. Or the Ride Down. One of those two is going to go away. Oh, I have to, I have to keep the hand before I can get rid of a card. Okay, uh, we're going to keep the ride down. Perfect, we got the third land. Opponent is white, and what's your other color, Link? We have our thematic pet here. I can play with the candles, I can dance in the petals. Green, we're playing against humans, all right. Starting to think maybe I should have kept the creature in order to keep pressure up, but actually both our creatures are vampires, so they're going to start growing with the Masquerade. And this just says attacking creatures have first strike, so I can madness this in and it'll be fine. I just want our opponent to play creatures and not removal spells. Then again, playing another creature let- I want him to- He's not gonna attack. Oh, he's gonna attack. Perfect. No blocks. Oh, I don't like that Thraven Inspector. Double blocks, I might just have to ride down. Otherwise, the masquerade will just kill this. Don't do it. Do not tell me you're playing around the masquerade. That's the only reason to double block. I 
All right, perfect. Another land could be favorable because it could... Well, no, I can't madness both those things out anyways. But I could madness something and ride down. Don't have enchantment removal. That would be rude. Our opponent's also doing very well for having Mulligan to six. True Faith Sensor, that's fine. I think. Yeah, if you equip and just attack with one, I can still swing in with this, double block, do the madness thing. Ride down. Actually, I might just do this and zap. Zap this guy. Because then there's no good blocks and this can attack. Yeah. I think that's the play. Because I don't want this getting double blocked. I want that to start attacking and getting in and getting bigger. Okay. We know what we're doing now. But now everything changes. Because I could have five. No, I still need to kill this so that this can attack. Because even with three first strike. Yeah. I know there's no good blocks because my stuff has first strike. My stuff gets bigger. He'll have a vigilance attacker. That'll take two of his mana though. And he still can't, you know, block anything effectively. And this thing having two power and first strike also helps if it gets double blocked, because I could ride down one and get a two for one. There's also Mythic rank 1130, by the way. Pretty sure I've played against this guy before somewhere on the channel. Alright, goes for attacks. Fiend Binder, okay. I guess we're just gonna go racing, but uh, that is not a race my opponent is going to win. Next turn is a super lethal attack because we have kill blockers and trample tricks. We can only take six here at most. So as long as there's no removal, removal would only slow us down slightly. I 
I mean, it'd be annoying. Okay, sacking a clue, that's a good sign. That means he doesn't have anything right now. Veteran Tithar. Well, that doesn't work because everything I have has trample. Secretly. Has trample. Uh, yeah, we're just going to ride that down, and we win. And this has... yeah. Trample, so it still gets through for damage. Ride down was definitely the right call over Faith, but although either one of those would have worked there but I still like the cheaper option. We just beat Mythic rank 1130. There we go. Next game. And we're up against Wretch, who's a platinum level. Yeah, this is all very reasonable. There's actually a chance the Village Messenger gets to flip here if my opponent doesn't have a one drop, because we're on the play. How about that? And we get Ride Down, which is also awesome. Next turn we have the Chaplain. Could also tap this thing. Might play the chap I think it's play the Chaplain and Lone Rider, he rides alone. Oh, that's rude. Okay then. can still attack with this. He goes for the double black, we can ride down. And this is not going to... I don't want him gaining life. Destroy this blocking creature. This also has a pump effect. Liliana the Last Hope. Wow. That needs to go away. That's actually good here, because I can... Pump this. This has to attack. We gotta take this out. Wipe that smug look off your face. Can't let you have Liliana while I have all one toughness creatures in my hand. A cursed witch. 
sure. This doesn't save any of our things. This has to attack. Alright, that's fine. I need one of my bomb enchantments, though. This is going to start gaining a mouth. Activating Terrarian. I must have wanted the card draw, or has something with Delirium. That's uh, not favorable to see. It's back Lone Rider who's actually amazing on this board. There's a Neonate. I almost don't want to play it. But I guess... Trick kills Lone Rider regardless of what it blocks. Yeah, we're, we're fine. Getting back... You know, both those... Th okay. I was wondering where that other one was pointing. Now you play the Accomplice. And there's the Lone Rider. And we're aggressive, so let's be aggressive. Oh, that's right, that thing doesn't have menace yet. Yeah, I shouldn't have attacked with that one. I should have just attacked with the chaplain and the neonate. Oh yeah, and that's still back. This recycling nonsense. Attacking me is fine. Blood Mist is also fine. That lets me attack... Give it here. Gisela the Broken Blade. Well, we're gonna need some removal. I know we don't have much of that in the deck. Lone Rider, it rides alone. That's something. Unfortunately, the Lone Rider's about to flip, and I don't think... I don't think that does what you want it to do, opponent. <laughs> this is another Lone Rider in there. I used both my Trample Tricks. Oh, and now those things are melding? That's gross. 
I mean, it's not like my deck is particularly fair. Now Lone Rider flips. And the Masquerade. Ah, uh, it just doesn't... Doesn't do enough. because of Lone Rider. Oh, his stuff is just too big. I can't win this now. And this deck really doesn't want more than, like, three land. Maybe this could be a 15 land deck. Plus Faith Unbroken, because that can be a kill shot. We have double red here, but we have double white on these cards. That's our split. We're a little bit more... Let's do that. because we really don't need more than four lands. It was kind of like our, our vampire deck when we were uh, Madness. We, we went down to 15 lands. Guy in the bush. Mythic rank, but he's uh, percentage rank. All right. I'm going to keep. It's a little slow for an aggressive hand, but our opponent mulliganed. Well, we found a third land. He haven't found a planes yet to play with us. Ovenwald Mysteries. I don't want to be giving them... I don't want to incendiary flow that. Because then I'd just be getting in for one. Unless I pitch a land to get in for three. Yeah, there's, there's something I need to incendiary flow. I 
could alchemist greeting, but that doesn't really help. I kind of need this. Go on. Let's let's be real. Of course, you can give that double strike. That's okay. What's not okay is that he's getting to investigate and getting more one three tokens. And I can't find a single planes. Yeah, that the, the Uvenwald mysteries is gonna get him back into this game. Oh, there we go. Now the question is, do I want his Hamlet Captain gone? I want my bomb enchantments. Maybe I should be running the second Blood Moon. Or Blood Mist. That's not better. So now I gotta use my... I guess I don't have to. There's Toppelgeist. Not helpful at the moment. But might be helpful after we go for this. The other reason I'm doing this is because he's not getting clues when his tokens die, it's only his non-tokens. There's a town gossip monger. Now if he leaves this back, I can just tap it. Ooh, always watching, that's a good one too. I don't have a creature in the graveyard. I'm actually going to do this. Because now Delirium is active. It's just going to be tapped. Of course, if I exile the chaplain, delirium won't be active anymore. So I gotta keep that in mind.
Okay, we have Dawn Griff. We're restricted by one white mana right now. But our opponent has resorted to chump blocking, so that's a good sign for us. The oh captain, my captain stays locked down. A oh cap. I guess because I could go in and because if he doesn't block this, this will have three power. So yeah, these both of these need to be blocked. Because this is three damage in the air at minimum. All right. All right, we got there. You know, I almost want to get another white source because we have those double white cards. Anyway, I keep editing the deck. The Lunark Mantle could even be played. Potentially. But I don't know that we need it necessarily. Alright, Sir Armand is known through the realm for her beauty and devotion to Ardenvale. When she stumbles upon Red Tooth Keep and Cursed Evil. J. Philippe! Anytime I try to read the lore on camera, it, just, it always that always happens. I go first, sure, I'll keep this. We can be aggressive. We have our colors, we have our double white. I'm gonna lead off with the Ember Eye Wolf just to really be aggressive. So next turn I could pump... Oh, that's two mana to pump. Ooh, Scourge Wolf. Definitely want to play that. Because that has First Strike, so... Vampire can't really... Okay, Vampire could attack into... I have to trade my Scourge Wolf. Well, okay, I don't have to trade the Scourge Wolf. Never mind. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna be aggressive. Give this plus two plus O. Oh. Could do that. But we'll wait. So without using this effect and discarding something, that actually won't be able to get through for damage. That's a 5-3. I could double block, which gets a creature into the yard. Or if I take this, three, six, seven, eight, we're potentially attacking for lethal. Let's not block.
a deranged whelp, that's not going to help much on the defense here. Okay, so those are going to trade three, six, seven, eight, nine. Not quite good enough. But I will discard a card. This makes a flyer. We have a really wide board, and these two, well, opponent needs to be able to block two of these. Because any two of those three is lethal, and then also combination of these two with one of these is lethal. So that puts him in a tough spot. And usually when our opponents are in a tough spot, that's when you can put your opponent, put pressure on your opponent like this, then they have to make plays that are otherwise not optimal. But I can only use one of these effects next turn. That is important to note. Chaplain. All right, so if I attack all out here, what happens? He's got two things blocked. Uh, what happens is we just win. Because whichever one of these doesn't get blocked, we just pump. Yeah, this is, this is fine. We pump this one. If he blocks this one, then we just, you know, hit him for six. See, just be aggressive. I'd like to get some of my bomb enchantments a bit more, since that's supposed to be kind of the feature here. But we've got three wins. And our next opponent is Boxy, or Booksy. I suppose that's Booksy, because there's that extra O in there. I go first. We're actually going to do this under the notion that our opponent might not have a 2-drop. This is a fine 2-drop, because we don't have one. Now I'm just sad. All right, well, I'm fine with trading. If our opponent doesn't trade, yeah, then I'm gonna do this. And then this can be a menace threat. There's a noose constrictor. The card's annoying. I think our first striker will be best against that. So we're not going to play the haster yet. This isn't the most mana efficient thing we could be doing. But we also have to, you know, play around this stuff. We had this stuff in our humans deck. This is, this could be the clue deck. Splashing black for spider spawning. 
Do I do? I don't want to do. I want to save this as a surprise. I think we'll just do this. We'll see what our opponent wants to do. We have to pitch cards to. Okay. I am actually fine just trading with the Dryad. Or you'd have to pitch three cards to keep both things. I, I just want to trade with the Dryad. I could even do this, force him to pitch a card. That's not that's not good enough. This is the, the first strike is going to be better with this, and then we'll play the Dauntless Cathar. Now, I'm kind of glad I have this land, because this would otherwise just be a mountain. I mean, it made our first couple turns slightly awkward, but I think it's fine. I'm actually going to hold this mountain... I mean, he'd have to play so much. It's weird that he didn't cast anything. But the way we beat this deck is we have to be aggressive. You have to pitch two cards to save your thing. So if you want to do that, I mean, be my guest, opponent. There's one. I'll make him pitch two more cards to save that thing. He's going for it. Yeah, now I've got a 5-3. Do you want to pitch two more cards? That's... it's not a good idea. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for it. Discarding so many cards just to keep that noose constrictor alive. That's not generally what you want to be doing. Though I can understand why our opponent did that. Oh, that's fine. I'll just play out my threats again. You're attacking me? In what world do you get to attack me like that? Let's play our threats first. Let's attack first. What am I doing? Let's not reveal our hand to him. Oh, did damage. Okay. Now, because next turn we can play always watching and slam in with a bunch of stuff. Or he gets his fifth land and bounces one of our things, which, you know, that happens. Weirding wood. Okay, so you have two mana to work with. You could crack the clue to draw a card, so that's technically... That's actually not a bad draw. Alright, opponent. You have to block this. And you can't even save your thing if you want to. This could be... Oh. I can do this. 
You have to block both of these opponent. <laughs> and that's the power of always watching. Yep, he, he had a deck very similar to ours. We just, just don't let that deck get off the ground and lock up the game. Even though we played those very defensive cards... We played around the news constrictor grid. Look at all these cards he threw away. Imprisoned in the moon. That could have actually helped. I mean, most of those were lands, but still. You generally don't want to throw away more than one card to protect your... Or keep your um, news constrictors alive. And it's nice that Always Watching got to uh, make a star appearance here. Inside specific. I know this stuff. Give me the lore. No, you're going to pop up with this big paragraph of lore. I'm not even going to get to read it, and then we're going to be in a match. That's how this goes. Can't place the cards. Alternate art. You can enable hide alternate art styles in the gameplay menu to show all the cards with their base art from the set. Okay. Yeah, I knew that. That's not lore. Uh, Mount Gizbetter. MTG is better. If people have spaces in your name. Uh, we go first and we're just going to be hyper aggressive. Now I've got this thing stopping every time. Up against blue green. Oh, Stencia Masquerade. I want to get this down right away. I want to get that down too. Yeah, let's get this down. Because this thing has menace. And now it's a growing menace threat. That is not a good card. That is not a land I wanted. play it, though. Because, hear me out, in case we get... I didn't mill a land. Uh, in case we get a plane... No, no, if we get a planes, we can't play ride down or not, because that's cost triple white. Oh, my attacking creatures have... Oh, you milled a land. That's fascinating. I guess he's going to double block the 4-4. Four, four. Not double block the 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Just going to chump chump. I think that's the most favorable outcome. I mean, I could have other tricks, but I could have lost the Neonate there. Not having the ride down active. But now we've got... Okay, Crawling Sensation activates. You get a, a thing. And that's only once per turn you can get that. There's not of the not of the bone for five. That's annoying. So that's ten life. Our opponent is effectively at eighteen. So we're just going to hang on to the ride down until it can get us the victory, I think. We've got two bomb enchantments here. I've had to play against these, and I lost very quickly. Noose Constrictor. 
that might be something we ride down. Especially if one wants to pitch enough cards to have it survive. Could use another action card. Oh, that works for me. Alright, we're just gonna keep it. We're Boros Aggro. We're attacking in with everything every turn now. There's no way we're not. I have first strike, so he, well, he would want to do that anyways. Ah, uh, okay. It's going to be a nuisance. It can go away. Yep, you get that, so you gain a whole bunch of 16 life. But he's got nothing, and he's a blue-green deck. I'm not worried about a sweeper here. Okay, there's another insect. But he's only got two cards. Spider spawning, darn it. That's annoying. We do have first strike. He doesn't have black mana, fortunately. Has he milled a swamp? Please mill a black sword. Okay, the swamp is milled. I don't know if he's running a couple of black sources. <laughs> uh, I want to kill four of the... Kill f three. One, two, three, four, five, six... That's how you're blocking? Oh, I got first strike though. Oh, okay, I was wondering, there's everything. Uh, yeah. Put your land, deal more damage. That has a ridiculous amount of... Oh, another gnaw to the bone? No! another 18 life. I like that one. Let's see how the blocks are going to go here. One, two, three, four, five. So if I do this, well, he can gnaw to the bone, so I can't kill him this turn. But now he's not going to have enough spiders left to kill anything. I need to... Oh, shoot, I could have killed the 1-1. One, one. I was playing too quickly. But that's okay. Opponent back up to 21. Could also just legitimately mill himself out with this. Alright, here we go. Milling relevant card. Oh, that's a very relevant card. I mean, it's not relevant when it's in his graveyard. Collective effort. Huh. Well, we can do that after combat. Do I even want to do that? Nah, let's let him just keep milling himself. He's got to find a way to kill me. 
Oh, that's a May effect. Okay. Because I want to use that to kill, like, a big... A big attacker or blocker if he ever finds one in the next turn. Just don't find a black source. This will be 13 spiders. Alright, perfect. Didn't find another black source. Did he did he end up milling another black source? Tossing a wharf infiltrator. I don't even know what that card does. I have not seen that played yet. Okay, so yeah, he's got the Epitaph Golem, that got milled, the Swamp got milled. We didn't see, like, a Groundskeeper or any way to get the Swamp back. That's kind of the risk you run with self-mill, is sometimes you end up milling some of the key stuff that you still need. It can be effective, but so can, you know, Stencia Masquerade and Always Watching. All right, next game. And okay, it, you automatically earn rewards. No, I know that. I want I want lore that I haven't read, which is like basically all of it because I haven't paid attention to it much, or I haven't had much time to pay attention to it because I was in Wilds of Eldraine. I got matched with games pretty quickly. Yes, we know we can do this. I did this already. There should be like a button where you can like just cycle through the lore parts or something. Unicorn feast. That my vampires would love to feast on your unicorns. Uh, I go first. I'm gonna keep. This is very awkward. I can cast two of these cards. A third land will let us cast one of these two. Unless it's the uh, tap land. But then I'd spend turn three not casting anything. So I'm going to lead off with the mountain. Because if we draw another mountain, we can cast the Scourge Wolf right away. That's going to be my logic behind that. Whereas if we draw another planes, this isn't coming out till turn three anyways. Groundskeeper! Nothing is coming out right away. Um, let's do this. And attack with haste later. We have incendiary flow. We're up against black green. Opponent's attacking. I'm definitely not blocking that. Well, I could do the flow here. I'd like the Scourge Wolf. I'd like the Flyer. Flyer would actually be really good. For multiple reasons. It incurred, it's more mana efficient to start with. Uh, but it encourages them to attack with this. Which I'm fine with. Okay, we're up against another... another neat arts. Where is that art from? Uh, it must be some sort of... Sp I don't recognize... It looks like an old type of border. But I am pretty familiar with the old school lands. And that does not seem like uh, one of them. Okay, so... I can Messenger and Wolf here and attack, or I can only play, I can play and I don't want to flow anything yet. Let's do what we do in Boros Aggro and just be aggressive. I mean, our opponent could have like uh, the aim high. 
Okay, goes for a trade there. Or as forbidden alchemy, okay. What else ended up in the bin here? Crawling Sensation. I don't think that's a good card. Well, I guess it could help with your, like, a heavy self-mill deck. Grapple with the past. Get a Corpse Trawler. That'd be kind of annoying to deal with. Or you can get your Groundskeeper back. Sure. Dead weight on my flyer. That's really annoying. Blood Mist, that's really cool. I think now we get the Scourge Wolf down. Because we want to have more creatures on the field when we get these enchantments down. Any fourth land will give us uh, Blood Mist. Always watching, need another white source. Opponent milling a lot of lands. Drog Skull Shield Mate. I mean, I do like that. Also, fine just doing this. Yeah, I have First Strike. I'll just flash this in. It's another surprise thing that's going to be an attacker. I guess I can start getting back some of these forests. Also, I'm saving the incendiary flow because it does three damage to any target, so I can even point that at his head if we need to. It's gonna get a 2 2 back. Alright. Surprise, I have another attacker. Surprise, all my stuff is bigger. Go, go, everything. But yeah, you gotta block, you can't, you can't kill anything here, which is the main problem. Yeah, he's just chump blocking. He's at four, everything is a lethal attacker, even if he doesn't know it, because we have incendiary flow. And the game is over. Yeah, Boros Aggro, pretty good deck. It usually is in most limited environments. But when you can really get a good Boros Aggro deck like this, it's it really goes well. We have lots of one drops, lots of two drops, um, and three just bomb enchantments. So I'm really glad, like, we've been on the other end of this deck a few times. I'm really glad that I get, you know, my turn playing this, uh, this sort of deck. When I'm past, like, a pick six always watching. Up against a diamond rank. We're missing... I have one playable card. I don't like this hand. If this was a mountain, I'd keep it, because then I could go to... I mean, I did say... Um... I'm going to keep the Faith Unbroken, because it's a little less restrictive on our mana. I do need a third and fourth land, though. That is... Is really bad here. What was the thing I put to the bottom? The collective. Alright. Now it's not as bad because we can start to be aggressive here. Pieces of the puzzle. 
Opponent digging for answers, likely. Oh, that's actually a great draw here. Opponent's down to nine. Just play like one creature. Actually, does one creature kill him? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have an incendiary flow, an alchemist. But you don't have mana to cast either of those unless you make a land drop here. You didn't make a land drop. If I just double pump, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, double pump kills him. It doesn't look like there's a stop there either. Yeah, you can't just sit around doing pieces of the puzzle every turn against a Boros aggro deck. You're not going to get away with that. Alright, well, let's take uh, one final look at the deck here. It definitely deserves another look. Yeah, Stencia Masquerade, Always Watching, and Blood Mist. If you can get those three enchantments, you can put this deck together. And um, this one's pretty easy to find. It's underrated, in my opinion. Like, look, we even found two of them. But uh, the Always Watching, they're just all so strong and super aggressive. Look, we had four one-mana creatures. The Rush of Adrenaline was great. Uh, several things with haste. Bit of vampires, so remember when you get the Stencia Masquerade, even if you're not in, um, like, Rakdos and getting all vampires, uh, in a Boros deck, all of your creatures will have First Strike, all of them. Doesn't matter if they're vampires or not, I made that mistake you know, before. And your vampires also get bigger, though. So that's why once you pick up this card, you really want to prioritize vampires um, as your red creatures when you can. But yeah, Ride Down was also excellent. Killing Blockers, Incendiary Flow. Yeah, the whole deck was just, uh, it was good. And we got seven wins, so that's awesome. We'll pick up our prize. And for now, I'll take my leave.